What a weird and interesting space, and I'm just going to take a second to acclimate up here. <sighs> I need this. I don't know if you can feel my heart pounding from out there. Uh, it's only scary because it's new, and it won't be new in a second. <sighs> I think I'm, I'm OK. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, this, uh, this is really a cool thing, and you guys are rad for, uh, for being here in the morning. Uh, I myself am not a morning person, and I don't assume that you are either. For all I know, you might have woken up this morning early and gone, oh, this sucks. And like you got dressed, and you, got, uh, you came here, and you're like, oh, this is the worst. Oh, it's so early. Who is this asshole on the stage? Oh. And um, it's my job to, um, I guess, give you ha have given you a good reason to wake up early. And I'll try to do that. Um, when John asked me to, uh, if I would be interested in coming and doing a thing for Creative Mornings, um, I said I would love to, and I would love to not do a slide, like a, a slideshow, not do a presentation. Um, because when I do that, I find that I obsess about it um, in a way that sort of I feel like after the fact I always feel like I, it, it constrained me in a way. And then I start thinking through my talk, you know, a month, uh, a month or so in advance. And, um, and I start, you know, the phrases start coming up and then I start, you know, I think about every little facet and then I start just making little notes and then, and then like two days before the talk I'll be like, oh no, what am I going to say? Um, and how am I going to say it? So I'll start writing it out. If, you know, in index cards or little things, you know, uh, notes in my, in my slide deck. And then I'll get so obsessed with the wording that I used to convey these ideas that I will um, be really afraid of screwing up any of that wording. And then what happens is I get up here with my laptop and I just read an essay to you. And then um, I think, OK, that went reasonably well, okay, I guess. I don't know if they liked it or not. Um, I said the interesting things that I thought were interesting and wanted to say. And then I go back home. And then you know, and, uh, eventually the video is posted of the talk. And I'll watch it for like 30 seconds. And I'll shut it off in horror with the realization that I just read an essay <laughs> to people. So I'm trying something new now. And I've just spent four minutes telling you that. <laughs> I'm trying something new where I'm just going, uh, where I haven't prepared the talk. I know what I'm going to say, and I'm going to start talking now. And then we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, so the prompt that uh, was given for the talk is action. And it's a little on the nose, but the first thing that came to mind um, when I heard that, that word action was and action. Because I'm a director, and it's obvious, and you know, y y I'm rolling my eyes inside right now. Uh, you may be too. But I think a lot about the fact that I'm a director, and I still don't even know what that means. Um, and I went to four years of film school, and, and I, when I graduated, I didn't know what a director was yet. And it wasn't until I started, had done it, like sort of fallen into it on, on accident. Um, of, of actually being on set, uh, the guy behind the camera whose job it is to say action and things start happening, that it started to make sense what directing is. Um, and incidentally, um, the first time you do that, it's a surreal experience when you're on set and there's actual crew that's being paid and stuff, and there's somebody to do with the, with the slate, and the cameras are rolling, and the AD says, uh, you know, sound speed, or the sound guy says speeding, and those are the scene 49, 70, these action. Or they don't say action. The slate guy doesn't say action. I'm a hack. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> um, but no, they, they say 
something. They say something and then do that. Or maybe they don't. I don't pay attention. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, it gets quiet, and then, um, and then you have to take in the whole scene, and then, and you, and then you actually say it. It's like somebody's, somebody tells you, okay, you can call action now. And then you go, what? Like, <laughs> I just say action, like in the movies? That's so stupid. <laughs> um, because when, when you're making videos by yourself or whatever, you know what you say. You say, uh, okay, go. You know? <laughs> so why can't they just do that in the film industry? Just go. Or I think in Japan it's like, hajime. Um, and that's so much cooler than action. Um, but regardless, action is that signifier that, okay, We've all assembled here early in the morning to get these, uh, to shoot this thing that we're all here to do. And we've all, we're all doing our jobs. And it's all culminated in this moment. Um, and we're here, and everybody's in front of the camera, it's supposed to be in front of the camera, is in front of the camera, and everybody who's behind the camera is, is there. And then you say, and then you look, and you look around, you look through the monitor, and there's a couple big monitors, there's the clients back there, and there's all the crew, and they're just, they're just watching, and it's very much like the movies. And then you call action, and then something happens. Um, and oftentimes, <laughs> uh, it's the best and worst thing in the world because what happens is absolutely disastrous. <laughs> and it's always, it's always like, take, take one of the of shot one of the morning, um, and you call action, and then you just watch every mistake that could possibly happen, happen. And... Um, those mistakes could be um, that you're hearing the lines for the first time uh, and they sound wrong, <laughs> you know? It could be that you haven't properly rehearsed with uh, the, the, the actors, the performers. Um, so they're just giving it their best guess as to what's going on. It could be that when you call action and people start, uh, the camera starts moving, it's awkward and clumsy, and you th what you had, the vision you had in your head before you saw the camera a actually move was completely wrong, and in practice is actually very awkward. I'm just going to drink some of this Topo Chico. Mm. Good stuff. Um, and then what you have to do, <laughs> and sometimes it's... Um, it's almost comical, and you're not, of course, you're not allowed to laugh when, <laughs> when you call action and then stuff happens. Like, if somebody on the crew would just be like, ha, 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 that was terrible, <laughs> you wouldn't want that person around. I think maybe as the director and usually the owner of the production company, I can say that, and sometimes I do just because it'll, like, take some of the pressure off, or usually what you do is deflect and say, or use sar sarcasm and say, Okay, we got it. Let's move on, and everybody chuckles because they know how bad it was. But then, um, but then you have to fix the mistakes, and it's here where I realize this is what the director's job is: is you are you are, are responsible for looking in that frame and noticing every single error in that frame, um, and that's what's interesting about the job. You have to uh, you have to have a heightened sensitivity to what you think of as problems and mistakes and errors and everything that went wrong. Um, and uh, when, when, you're, when you're just starting out as a director, when you notice errors, they come as a surprise. And you don't quite know what to do about it. You're like, because you're, you're looking and you call action and then the take happens and then you call cut and then you're like, well, that wasn't supposed to happen. That kind of sucked. And then you don't know what to do. But then, of course, with experience comes um, that unique ability that we all develop to notice an error and know what the fix is. And that's when it starts to feel good and it starts to feel gratifying. And I'm talking about directing. I don't know how many of, the peop how, how many of you guys are directors or have directed um, you know, motion picture kind of video stuff. Um, I'm presuming not the majority of, of you. But uh, the interesting thing about that, that concept of director is that it, it, it exists across all disciplines that involve creativity in some aspect, where it is somebody's responsibility to sort of be creative, really, creatively responsible 
for noticing errors and calling them errors <laughs> using their own set of metrics for what, a, what an error is and, and um, communicating what is, what is wrong with those errors and then figuring out, coming up with the ideas uh, around how to make them not errors anymore. Um, I think we can agree that that's kind of a universal thing. Um, and, and, we, and so uh, when you're in that position, you're being very re reactive because you have to, uh, you have to move quickly. Colla collaboration, you're not afforded the, the, uh, the luxury of time to just sort of sit and ruminate. You have to communicate with the people who are all collaborating to make this, this creative work. Um, and you have to tell them, what's your, what's your take on how to, uh, how, to, how to make the thing uh, better? Um, so, uh, the concept of director, I think about this a lot, and um, how, how just the word itself can apply to many different disciplines. Um, film industry uh, seems to be the only one where director means, just that word director means exactly what it is, which is the person sort of in charge, the center point, the hub of, of the creative process. Um, I think that in the music industry, and somebody please correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that person is more often known as a producer. Um, and if you're a music producer in the booth, you're sort of the one that's in charge of, um, of ingesting all of the, the, the input and then figuring out how to tweak it and make it better so that what ends up on the track um, uh, is as rich and dense and creative as it can be. Um, and your performers are, of course, the, the musicians. And, uh, and then that, they call that person the producer. Uh, now, in the film industry, the producer is not the creative person, usually. Um, the producer is the money, the money person or the logistics person. Um, in design, and many disciplines around that, we call it the creative director, which is, is a pretty robust expression. Um, director of creativity. I don't know. It's very self-evident. Self <laughs> Um, uh, a little on the nose, <laughs> um, but, but a very, very, very useful term and more specific. Um, I think there's, the ter there's like the term art director that applies as well. Um, that's a little bit more specific in, 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 in terms of the visuals. Uh, you've got, I don't know, in architecture maybe, they, they, don't, they don't call it a director, they call it, I don't know, an architect? Um, but there's somebody at the top who's in charge of dictating all of the, the, the creative and design decisions. Um, in, uh, so I'm, I'm doing renovations on my home. Um, and I've got a contractor, and the contractor is helping me make a lot of creative decisions. Um, and, and, I, and, I, and it's been an interesting process for me to watch him do that, because there are a million decisions to make, and, and a lot more can go wrong in that process than you would think. If something goes really wrong, a house falls down. And so it's not just a, a matter of, you know, making a funny commercial like I do. It's a matter of like building a structure that houses people and keeps them safe and also happens to look nice. Um, so um, it's, this, it's this universal uh, position of, of a person that uh, has to respond to things going wrong and, uh, and react to them and turn them into positive output. And that's what I like about my job. Uh, and the more I do it, the, I feel like the better I get at it um, because things always go wrong. And um, what's kind of funny about things going wrong is that it's really hard to look cool uh, when things go wrong. Um, because you have this vision of yourself, all of you do, of this idealized vision of yourself in your, in your zone, in your work process, in your studio, in, in the office you work at. And, um, and it's super cool. It's Fonzie cool. Um, and you know how like Fonzie would like, I forget what he did, but he would like walk up to the jukebox and he would just do that. He would hit it and his, and his song would start playing. Um, and he would always look cool because he's Fonzie. I'm talking about happy days for those of you who are <laughs> <laughs> under the age of 30. 
it just dawned on me, not everybody's older than 30. Uh, Arthur Fonzarelli, Henry Winkler. He was a greaser, he wore a leather jacket, and he always looked cool. That was like the epitome of cool when I was growing up in the early 40s. Um, so, the, the thing is, you gotta, as, when you're in that director position, you have to get used to things going wrong a lot and not losing your shit and not worrying too much about looking cool and just reactive in a, re reacting in a positive way uh, that's ultimately going to turn into generate go a good outcome for everybody. Um, uh, incidentally, I'm a, I'm a dad now. I have a two-year-old. And the thing I've noticed about being a dad is that you react to things going wrong in a little bit of a different way, which is, and you remember this maybe from like driving with your own dad, and dads just go, oh, come on, you know, a lot, because people are always cutting you off, and there's that dad way of like losing your cool. And uh, so I tend to do more of that than I used to before I was a dad. Uh, but still, I think it's always um, beneficial to, um, sort of be able to uh, not overreact to things um, when problems arise, which they will. Uh, so one other thing about this creative process that is the position of, of directing, as I do it, is um, the, the more you do it, the better you get it, and the quicker you are at correcting errors. And again, it's your job to, uh, it's your job to uh, identify what is an error, what is a quote-unquote error, because the errors that you see are not going to be the, other, the, the, the errors that other people see. Um, whoa. You have your own specific, you have your own specific um, heuristic of, of what, an, what makes an error. And sometimes you're going to notice things that everybody else doesn't notice. And we all do this. This is just called taste. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, you can look at a design, and your collaborator can look at a design, and you can see that um, um, one element, its pixels are, I mean, its, uh, its placement, its position is three pixels off, and your, partner, your collaborator cannot see that very same thing. And it can drive you absolutely crazy. Um, and to your collaborator, they think you're nuts. Um, but, but you're in the position of, do, of doing that, of fixing, doing something about that, of fixing the error. Um, so what I've, I've, I've kind of developed this idea of like what it means to have experience doing a creative thing and getting better and better at, at it to the point that you're sort of becoming an expert. And in my mind, expertise... Is, is error correction, um, error correction that happens uh, faster and faster to, to the point sometimes that you're correcting errors before they even happen. Um, and that's what expertise is in any discipline. If you sit down with, your, with the stylus, if you're designing something, you know in advance of, putting, of, of drawing your first shape, you know that if you drew it in that corner, it's going to look dumb. So you start in this corner. And that's expertise. You know that you're correcting your errors. You've got that, that meter going on in your brain the whole time you're doing this process of creating. Um, and and um, that's what becomes interesting. That's why we all do what we do, I feel like. That's why we all uh, strive to get better at what we do. Um, why we practice. Whether it's, create, whether it's creativity, whether it's art, whether it's sports, whether it's public speaking, anything, you know in advance of doing the thing, in advance of standing on the stage, for instance, um, that you can set yourself up for, um, for a positive outcome or a negative one. Um, and to the point that uh, as soon as you start going, as soon as you take that action, right, title of the talk, as soon as you start taking action, you can respond to it uh, and know what are errors and what are not errors. What's interesting about that is uh, this concept of errors. What is an error? Um, 
I've always thought of it as doing things wrong. <laughs> Some, sometimes you, do, you, you make errors, and they're good errors. Um, from the very beginning, since I was like directing, I always had this, this sense uh, that I was doing things wrong. And it didn't feel good. It doesn't feel good to feel like you don't know what you're doing. Um, but, if, but if the outcome is OK, then you can start to feel like it's OK, that doing things wrong might be the best way for you to do them. Uh, that's a powerful uh, insight to have, I think. Um, if you focus too hard on doing things right, uh, then your work might change, your output might change. And uh, so uh, w with that in mind, I feel like uh, th there, are, there are good kinds of errors, and those, kind, those good kinds of errors, I would say they all sort of... Um, they, they all sort of uh, build up to define what it is that makes you, you. What it is that makes your own work, your, your work. Is that you've made those certain good errors in your work that uniquely identify you and uniquely identify your work. And I feel like I screw up all the time. And sometimes I screw up intentionally. Um, I, didn't, I didn't iron my shirt. And that was a choice. And it all uh, results in this, what you see. And this is just me. Some other guy who came up and gave this exact same talk might have ironed his shirt, but that wouldn't have been me. Um, and I think that uh, if you're doing creative work, uh, that, I think you can take the opportunity for that to be your, your sort of fingerprint. Um, in that sense, an error, I, I sometimes think of errors as, as artifacts. Um, and and in, 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 um, in film and in video, uh, you think of um, the film stock that something was shot on or the format, you know, the type of video, whether it was shot on RED or Alexa or Mini DV or whether it was shot on 16 millimeter or 35 millimeter. And all of those formats have their own unique set of errors, essentially. Um, or we call them artifacts, but they're errors. What they are is imperfection. Uh, and again, there's something extremely powerful about that idea that imperfection can be positive. Um, I overuse this, and forgive me, but that concept of wabi-sabi, the Japanese concept of wabi-sabi, which is something can be perfect, and then you mess it up a little bit so it's imperfect, and that makes it human. I embrace that fully. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. Yeah, so I make videos. I forgot to explain that part of what I do. <laughs> I'm going to go back and start again. We've got time. I'll just make it quicker this time. I'll error correct, see? Um, action, <laughs> thank you. All right, so I'm, what I do is I... Um, tech companies uh, out there, startups and big tech companies and small tech companies and one-person developer shops and the whole spectrum, uh, they, they write me emails every day and they say, this is what we do. We, uh, it's sort of complicated. Can you help us make a short video that explains this complicated thing in a simple way? And that's f awesome for me. Like, that's, a hu that's an amazing position, position that I accidentally found myself in. Because I'm a geek and I'm a technology enthusiast and what that means is I get exposed to some of the coolest tech out there before most people know about it. Um, this morning, while I was waiting and before I got on stage, I got an email in my inquiry inbox, and the subject was Bitcoin plus Africa equals emotion. It's fairly ambiguous, but it's powerful. So just remember that. Uh, I don't know if I'll work with them. <laughs> uh, I'm not bullish on Bitcoin, <laughs> but um, um, so one of the companies that came uh, to do for to me to do a video is this really neat Icelandic company called QuizUp, and I was just in Iceland a few weeks ago, and they're a big deal there. Um, the technology industry is not huge, uh, but they employ something like 150 people. Um, which is most of Reykjavik, and 
<laughs> and and the, their app is so cool. It's a quiz app um, where you, it just connects you randomly with people who are interested in the same topic you are, and the topics go really deep. And you can play on any topic you want, and you'll just be up in, in bed late at night. I want to play Arrested Development. So um, I'll go, OK, Arrested Development. It'll go pair me up in real time with somebody who's also good at Arrested Development. And we'll just play each other in a quiz game in real time. Um, and there's rewards and stuff. And then they were interested in introducing this new social, um, social infrastructure uh, and ecosystem beneath the whole thing, which is really cool. Um, which means it's no longer just a quiz game. It's actually under, underlying the whole thing is a way for you to meet people, the people that you're playing against. And people are actually doing this. People are meeting other people around the world who have shared interests with them, which is kind of what you know, eHarmony and all of those kind of things and dating sites were supposed to get to initially anyway. I remember when I first signed up for Friendster, like you enter your favorite movies and stuff, and the, ho the hope is, oh, I'm going to find somebody who loves all the same movies that I do. It never quite worked out that way. And then, like, what, 15 years later, <laughs> here we are um, with our um, stuff. That <laughs> anyway, so I, uh, I made a video for them. And, uh, well, I'll show you the video that went, that, that went out to the world. I know a lot about Game of Thrones, like a lot. It's my main topic on the game Quiz Up, where I basically dominate. So when Quiz Up paired me up against this guy from who knows where, fronting like he knows more than me about Thrones. I will have your head. I played hard. She kicked my ass. I kicked her ass, but Thrones is just a hobby for me. On Quiz Up, I go deep on so many topics, but my real passion is Beyonce. Test me on my Beyonce. No, in fact, don't test me, because it wouldn't be fair to you, like it wouldn't be fair to this guy. Bring it. Quiz Up matches you up in real time with worthy Beyonce opponents all over the world. Ah! I crushed him. Made him feel bad about how dumb he is. I challenged him to a rematch, lost again, felt bad about how dumb I am. But I messaged him through the app, made friendly with him, built him back up a bit. Turns out he's pretty cool. Turns out you can actually make friends with people in the same stuff as you. Who knew? That's how I met this nice lady. Hey. See if there's three things I know in this world. It's Beyonce, neuroscience, and My Little Pony. I have a pretty strong presence on the My Little Pony feed and quiz up. I post gifts from the show, quotes about friendship, anything that inspires me and my friends. And I brag about winning games. The only person who's ever beat me is this guy. Friendship is magic. But I figure we have so much in common, there's got to be something there. So we started talking through quiz up, whatever. Long story short, we're basically in love now. And I have a new friend who knows the truth and beauty in Queen Bee. And I'm a global leader in a community of like-minded individuals who accept me as I am. And now I'm the number one Game of Thrones player in the world. Come at me. That feels nice. I don't usually get to hear applause after I really... Um, Okay, so the big secret is that was the second video I made because the first one completely sucked, and I got to do it again uh, because my client was nice, and they were understanding. And what I tried to do the first time I, I made a video for Quiz Up, uh, the, the experience was really fun. The process was one of the best days on set I've ever had, but it was something I, I chose to try to make a video that was not sort of in my, um, in my style something that I would be unfamiliar with um, because to the point that when I was there on set and there were 30 extras in a house and the crew and I called uh, and, and, and the setup was sort of like a party scene and I'm going to show you that. You're the only people that are ever going to get to see it. Um, and I'm going to cut it off quickly because um, it's bad. Uh, all that stuff set up in the scene when I was behind the camera and looking and I called action, there were so many errors that I was not trained to recognize what they were and I had no idea how to fix them and it was all kind of a, uh, a bad trip. 
Um, so I'm going to just start playing a little bit of that, and then I'll move on. Life is like a party. It's just that sometimes that party sucks. But we've got just the thing. It's called Quizza, the biggest trivia game in the world. Hundreds of topics and thousands of questions. Play in real time against real people. With people that also... All right. <laughs> Enough of that. <laughs> that was just a rough cut. It never got to the full, you know, the, the, the final cut and everything. We all just kind of, you know... <laughs> <laughs> called, it, called it quits on that one. Um, but it was a really interesting learning experience, and uh, that's not my style. Um, so what I, what I got the unique opportunity to do, which you don't get to do very often, is start from scratch and try it again. Uh, and I'm so glad I did, because I really, the, the one that I ended up doing, which was closer to the thing that I know how to do, um, was a lot was a better outcome and um, is one of my one of my m m one of my favorite videos that we've done um, so that was a, a, like a little unique v window on the on my process what I'm going to end with is this errors are things to look out for and correct quickly and sometimes they're good and sometimes errors can be positive, and it's okay to fuck up, but when you fuck up, do it for the right reasons. And when you fuck up, fuck up like only you can fuck up. <laughs> and I think I'll end it there. 